Hello everybody, I am Ben from Team Panic and sitting in front of me are two of my ant weights. So this is Microdot, who you might remember from last month, who was a test, basically a test platform for these new silicon wheels when I needed something different after the last version of this robot failed catastrophically. Um, and it failed because it was running along this little back edge here. So having a think about that, that back edge of the old version of this robot was actually modeled on this, which is Don't Need Roads, my drum spinning robot. So realistically, this robot has that same problem. It runs on this back edge when lifted up from the front. Now, obviously it doesn't get lifted up from the front all that often because it does have a spinning weapon. However, there are still some times where things get in underneath me and the weapon doesn't make contact, which is a problem because once I'm up like this, I don't have any control at all. So I decided that what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fix that by doing the same thing I did to Microdot to Don't Need Roads. This will actually be the 10th iteration of this robot um, and yeah, it's just, it's crazy how many times this thing gets changed, but I'm using it as a test platform to kind of workshop how I like drum spinning robots to be. Um, yeah, so then on top of the change, so we're going to swap to wheels all the way at the back and use the same silicon technique as we used in Microdot. We're also going to change the weapon motor again. So the weapon motor in this version is this huge turnergy motor in here, which I changed to because I thought I needed more power in the robot. However, what it's done is it's just added weight and it's not really added anything else to the whole robot, except for the fact that because it's such a large motor and it doesn't have great connection points, the little mounting point for this motor is quite flimsy. So I wanna get rid of that and go back to the old motor that I was using. This is the old motor. It's a smaller brushless motor, but it does the job okay. Uh, so we're gonna jump back over to this guy and yeah, see how we go. Now, I will say I have tried in the past to push the wheels back a little bit further. This here is that one of those previous attempts. However, as you can see, I pushed the wheels back, but not back far enough. So it didn't really have anywhere to stick the electronics in here. And also it didn't fix the issue of riding along that back edge. That issue still existed. Uh, so this chassis actually never got fought because I just couldn't fit all the electronics into it without either running into the drum that was mounted up here or running into the wheels which were mounted here. So in the new design, what we're going to do is we are going to put a wall along the front up here, up there, so that uh, the electronics are housed and then we'll also put wheel guards in as well. So I can jam the electronics in and they can kind of sit in there a little messily and they're not going to get into anything that's spinning and start making a mess of things. Also, hopefully by changing back to the smaller motor, we can upgrade to the heavier Team Panic bar. This thing is probably one of my favorite beta bars that I've ever created. And yeah, if I can get this back in the robot, I am gonna be so happy. Okay, so let's uh, get started on this. I'm not gonna show you any of the electronics. I will show you the printing, I will, we will put it together. And then we're actually gonna take this out and fight it together as we did with Microdot the last time we talked about these silicon wheels. Uh, so yeah, let's get some uh, building going and then let's get some fights happening.
So here we go with uh, the first fight for the, for the day and a, this is for a completely untested Don't Need Roads. I barely even span the drum up before starting this so I was very happy to see that the drum did actually spin up. However, as you can see here, the drum is actually hitting the floor just a little bit here and there. Uh, which means that the drive is pretty wobbly and also while the drum does have a bit of power it doesn't have a lot because it keeps hitting the floor. Also. Right here, the silicon tire slipped off the TPU hub and stopped uh, the robot moving very well, which means I've basically only got one side drive at this point in time, and that is not helping me at all. Also, uh, the drum stopped there because I didn't actually tighten the brushless motor mount far enough, and it slipped forwards and hit the sidewall, meaning that it could not actually uh, keep spinning the drum up. So overall, this was not a great fight for me, especially as right here, I get high sided on the piece of silicon uh, from the wheels and then therefore get counted out. And this is then the second fight. So this time around, I tried to retighten the, uh, the brushless motor mount and I also glued the silicon wheels onto the hubs and things actually started off a lot better. So. I still hadn't fixed the issue that the uh, the drum kept hitting the ground and then I also obviously didn't actually tighten that brushless motor up enough because the drum again stopped moving and so that meant that I was out of, uh, out of weapon at this point. Also because of the change, the wheels are a little bit too far back I think and they're not quite getting the, uh, the amount of power that they should be because all the weight is forwards and then unfortunately uh, my opponent goes down the pit just as it opens there. And so moving on to the third fight, I actually changed the uh, the mounting bolts for the drum uh, motor this time, which meant that the drum worked a bit better. And as you can see, it does have some power because it managed to flick my opponent over in this fight, which is really good. This is kind of the first time the drum seemed to work pretty well. Um, and yeah, the, the drive issues that I kind of sort of mentioned with the weight being too far forwards in the robot, do start to appear a little bit in this flight, but mostly it's just the fact that the uh, the drum keeps hitting the ground. So I need to, I think, reprint the chassis so that the chassis is a little bit bigger at the front there and stops this from actually happening continuously like it is right now. Uh, also, this particular drum doesn't seem to get a great grip on things. It does work most of the time, but not all the time. And then once again, I win this one by pit out. So this is the last fight in my round robin up against a robot called Dr. Claus. Dr. Claus has been uh, at least in the top three for the past, I don't know, six months or so, simply because it usually grabs robots just like that and then drops them down the pit if the pits are open, which thankfully at this time they weren't actually open. And yeah, so my real only hope here was to try and knock those claws off, uh, which has been done before and has been done quite well before, but I think with uh, the drum continuously hitting the ground, I just wasn't getting the power and I was also, I kept hitting the wheels rather than actually hitting the claws, which didn't help me all that much. Uh, I mean, I kept flipping him over, but he can drive inverted, so there's absolutely no reason to flip him over. What I really needed to do was hit those claws. Also, somewhere in amongst all of these hits, I did manage to hit his switch. Unfortunately, uh, it was a one in a million hit and actually jammed the switch on rather than turning the switch off completely. Uh, so that meant that he continued to fight and had problems turning the robot off. And then he grabbed me in his claws and dropped me down the pit. So this is the final fight for me for the day. This is a three-way grudge match to see who gets second place out of my uh, round robin. Because the person who got second place would go through into a rumble for the finals or into the finals themselves. So we needed to know which one of us actually made it that far. Because we all got the same amount of points during the round robin. So uh, for me, unfortunately, it was pretty clear right off the bat that one of my wheels was just not working, just at all. I was limping around on just my right wheel and the drum. Thankfully, uh, because the drum wobbles the robot around quite a lot, it meant that I was still relatively mobile, not greatly mobile, but relatively mobile for this entire flight. I was definitely pushed around a lot more because I couldn't maneuver myself out of the way of the wedge and the, uh, the pusher bot here. Um, however, they did kind of work that out and they stopped going for me all that much. So I was just kind of left sitting in the corner um, for the most part anyway. They do start going back after each other in a minute here. And yeah, I was just kind of like 
ambling my way around and I get pushed pretty much anywhere they want to leave me and then I just kind of sit there with the weapon spinning trying to uh, keep moving and not be counted out. So thankfully, like I said, the weapon spinning meant that I wasn't counted out um, because I was able to kind of gyro procession myself a little bit around the arena. This here, I stopped the weapon on purpose uh, because I was being jammed into the wall, so there's no point having it up and running. Then I realized that uh, without the weapon spinning, I couldn't move, so I had to get that weapon back up. I got the weapon back up, and as you can see, I could kind of sort of just move a little bit here and there. What I was really trying to do was avoid going down that pit, and they really did leave me alone for most of this. They kind of uh, dodging and dancing amongst themselves, and then eventually they did turn their sights back towards me, but then kind of kept going at each other, which you know, I, because I was relatively crippled, it was probably a good move in this regard. I mean, I am, yeah, unable really to move much outside that corner. I could move a little bit, but not a huge amount. Um, yeah, and then one of them goes down the pit, which is, you know, something that always happens in this. And then it was two of us left uh, in this fight, and I was uh, crippled. So I was basically expecting to go down the, the pit on the first attempt. However, drum saves the day. I kind of got booted back off the pit by the drum and that was just hilarious but I didn't save me in the long run. So what happened in that final fight? Well it's uh, it's annoying. It looks like I had a parts failure in the Arduino board just down the bottom here. So this is a full soldered set of everything that you need for a combat robot other than an EST to run the brushless motor. Uh, and it's, as you can see, just soldered in a big old lump down the bottom here, which means that if one part goes out, everything goes. Like that entire board has to be ditched now and I need to redo that whole thing. And it all comes down to one of those two tiny little chips on there. These are H-Bridge chips and this is a dual H-Bridge board. And one of those has gone in that setup. And that's basically the end of that story. I have had a little bit of a chance to look at it and I don't think it's the motor. I think it's just that one of these chips blew up. Um, and that does happen from time to time, especially when you're dealing with these type of uh, really cheap H-bridges from China. Sometimes parts are just going to break, especially when you go with the cheap option. Um, I am considering moving away from these H-bridges to these H-bridges. The difference is this is a half amp. H bridge, this is a 1.5 amp H bridge. Now, half amp H bridges are okay because these motors will only ever draw half an amp. Even at stalled, they're going to draw half an amp, so these things are fine um, normally. But I, I do want to put a safety margin in, and there's not a whole lot of difference in footprint or weight between the two of these things. So we might end up going with the hardier. Um, H bridge here and also being that that's a single chip these are slightly more expensive and if you get them from the right place it uh, can be a little bit more reliable so that's probably what we're going to do uh, so that does mean that I came third essentially for my round robin div at the monthly meet which means I didn't make it through the finals and uh, no trophy for the old don't need roads he's uh, a <laughs> Kind of unlucky in that regard. I got a trophy with Don't Need Roads ages and ages and ages ago and haven't really since then. On the other hand, all was not lost because I did take Microdot along as well. Microdot competed in the 2v2s with uh, Jaden, who also has a YouTube channel here that I will link down below. Uh, you should check out his stuff. He does kind of more silent and just kind of music build oriented stuff, which is quite cool. Uh, and yeah, we fought together and came first in our 2v2s, which went really, really quite well. Although I didn't record any of those fights because I wasn't really testing anything with um, Microdot this month round. I was literally just fighting that and enjoying that and it was great. But this design really, really does seem to work quite well. So I think in the near future, we might have to do another version of Microdot, but we're gonna replace this middle tine with a weapon of some sort. We might have to shrink everything down a little bit to make weight again, but I just, I have a feeling that's going to be good fun to watch. So that's probably something that we will definitely do in the future. Whether that's uh, this side of July, I have no idea, but it is now in the cards that I'm going to uh, add a weapon to something that kind of looks like Microdot. For the moment though, I am going to keep using the chassis. It's a little bit nicked and chewed along the front wedge there, but 
That's totally fine. There's absolutely nothing in under here, so that can be nicked and chewed as much as it likes, and it's all good to go. The back got a few hits as well, but on the whole, that wasn't a huge deal. Uh, so yeah, there you go. That was the upgrades to Don't Need Roads. I think for next month, realistically, the only uh, change to this, I'm going to print a new shell for it, and we're going to change motor controllers, one to the other. And then that should do it. With the, um, the wheels now glued, and the brushless motor actually st sitting in place correctly, everything seemed to be relatively okay. We do need to work out the issue that I was having with um, the drum hitting the floor, and I literally just think I need to add just a little bit more to either side here, and then we should be good to go. Um, yeah, so that is the end of that one, I think. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this one, and I will see you in the next video.